Welcome to Coffee Time, a show that focuses on three important ingredients, your favorite celebrity, intriguing conversation, and of course, a cup of coffee. I'm your host, Alexis Morgan. Follow me as I dive into the innermost secrets of our guest during our one-on-one -on -one conversation and discover something that you probably didn't know. This should get very interesting, so sit back, relax, and don't forget your cup of coffee. Rub the styling balm into your hands and work it through your hair to define texture and prevent frizz. Sweep your curls up on top of your head and loosely secure with an elastic. Use pins to pull front sections of your hair away from your face, leaving volume in the front. Leave some pieces out for a more romantic look. Take more hair pins and tuck loose ends around the crown of your head to create a large loose bun. Sweep your hand around the bun to catch any flyaways. Secure your bow. And if you want a little sparkle, add some shine serum. Welcome back to Coffee Time. I'm your host, Alexis Morgan. Today's guest certainly doesn't need an introduction. With her single, What You Need, and heavy radio rotation, endorsement deals including my favorite Esnavi live collection by Dazzle Dry, sold out performances and shows with music greats like Eric Benet. She can be seen with artists like Neo and Trey Songs, as well as had guest appearances on TV shows like Mob Wives and Bridezillas. I would like to welcome to the show Esnavi. Thank you so much for joining us today. How's your day going so far? Thank you for having me. Great, great. It's a good morning. Glad to be here. So talk to us about your new single, What You Need. What was the inspiration behind the song? Well, as a songwriter, everything that I write about is stemmed from what I'm going through at the time, my life experiences, the things that inspire me. So what do you need? Um, it's, it's me asking my audience, what do they need from me as a singer-songwriter in the industry? And then it's also the universe as, asking me, what do I need from the universe to help me provide that? So it, it's kind of a twofold um, inspiration for the song. So it's like the universe asking me, what do I need to help with my journey in pursuing you know, my artistry? And then me asking the consumer, like, what do you need? You know, what, what can Esnavi offer the world that isn't already out there? So. So the music community, as well as corporate America, has embraced you. How was the experience and the feeling of partnering with brand companies like Nine West, Abercrombie & Fitch, and Taylor H&M, and others? I feel very honored. I mean, so early on in my career to be able to be afforded those kind of opportunities. I mean, there's people who've been in the business for years and years and years. and. Um, it's just a blessing. It's, it's a wonderful feeling to be acknowledged and to be able to start branding myself so early in my career. So it's an amazing feeling. Well, I heard something interesting about you. I heard you have an excessive a compulsion with cleanliness. What is that all about? Yeah, I have OCD. So anybody <laughs> who knows me or works with me, um, I, I have over compulsive disorder with like things being out of place. And the good thing is, at least it's with cleanliness. You know, right. it's not like with something weird. So, you know, I'm always cleaning up behind myself or other people at restaurants. Like I cover my plate after I eat. <laughs> I think it's disgusting to look at it. So yeah, I have, um, I have OCD bad. Wow. <laughs> so, does it make you like disturbed? Well, Pristine. Like I'm happy like, like it's not a chocolate out of place. So I don't feel like I need to move it. So this is good. But yeah, it's really weird. And it's like, you know, I don't if it's a strange, it's just certain things just have to be in place. So wow, interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, you're originally from Wisconsin. That must have been a huge transition coming from Wisconsin to to Harlem, the whole yeah. NYC experience, you know, how has that been? I mean, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it's like the only urban city in Wisconsin. So, uh, you know, fortunately, I did, I was exposed to a little bit of culture there, but coming from anywhere and coming to New York, I mean, unless you're like from Japan or LA, <laughs> it's going to be like a fish out of water. It's, it's completely different world. So um, I always felt like a bright lights, big city kind of girl. So. 
I knew that Milwaukee wasn't where I needed to be the rest of my life. So it really wasn't hard for me to adapt, but it's a totally different planet, New York, from Milwaukee. Like, everything, <laughs> so different. Well, we're certainly glad that you're here. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Esnavi and Coffee Time. Good morning, Nelly. Oh. Hey, have you ever tried Honey Nut Cheerios? Love them. Neat. Now you, on the other hand, you need some help. Why? Look at you. What is that? <laughs> you mean my honey wand? No. Get rid of it. Come on. Matter of fact, <laughs> churches, <laughs> shades. <laughs> wow. Now, that voice. My voice? What's wrong with my voice? Yeah, man. B got swag. Be happy. Be healthy. That's got to go to him. Sweet. Welcome back to Coffee Time. I'm sitting here with the lovely and beautiful SMV. So I'm on social media, and of course you are too. So where can people find you on social media? At SNV. I'm at SNV on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook, I'm at SNV Live. And uh, my website, www.esnavi.com. That's where like, all my links are in SNV World, so that's a good place to to go visit. Do you give us a little bit tidbit of what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah, well, on my website, I like to give a little bit more um, information into my world, let you know like what's up, what's new. Um, it's just a little bit more information that you I don't share on mm -hmm. social media, so you have a reason to visit my site. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to definitely check it out. Yeah. With all of the lights, cameras, and actions, uh, what kind of matters most to you? Um, me being true to myself and my purpose as an artist, I think that's extremely important, especially in the industry and the world that we live in. I think um, just really honoring who you are as a person and sharing that true person with the world and your true spirit. So that's the most important thing to me. And that's what I carry, you know, wherever I am, even in this interview, when I'm recording, when I'm writing, I just try to be true to myself and, and uh, share that's not V with the world, my essence and soul. Where do you feel like you're the most yourself? Is it in the studio or at home? Hmm, on stage. Hmm. On stage. I mean, I guess as an artist, I feel most at home on stage. And as myself, I feel most at home at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm really into, uh, I mean, yeah, at home. I think at home. But as an artist on stage, there's no other place that I... Uh, get the feeling that I get from performing and feeling live energy and sharing that with my audience and connecting with words that I've written and singing. So, I mean, if I could live on stage, I could build a house on stage, I would live on stage, literally. Wow. So how do you connect with your audience, even from a place like on stage? Well, the songs that I write, I think um, I relate. I, I write about love. I write about life. I write about um, real life situations, societal observations. So I think your average person can relate, first of all, to love. Right. If you haven't been in love, you want to be in love. Or if you've been loved, you miss the love. So I write a lot about love. And I think, um, you know, the, the my audience and my fan base, they definitely can relate to that. And even real life situations, talking about what you need, I'm sure someone, you know, whether they're praying or whether they're talking to their friends, people always say, oh, I need this, I need this, oh, I need this, I need this. So that's even a song that um, kind of touches on that, that people, you know, they need things. So that that's a song that's an example of something that connects. But just overall music and lyrics and life, I think that's how I connect to the people who like my music. Do you ever get personal fan emails or letters? And what do they say to you? I get, because of social media, I get more so personal things on Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter and Instagram because you're so accessible now. Like, it's right. it's not like when we were growing up, you know, you couldn't really, like, get in contact with Michael Jackson and, you know, big stars like that. You couldn't, you couldn't really contact them. Now through social media, I mean, we do have a team of people that work social media, but I like to actually, you know, read what people write. So I get some weird stuff. I had, <laughs> I, I would say the weirdest thing that ever happened was a guy from Facebook like sent flowers to um, one of the people that we work with for me, like a complete stranger. And uh, yeah, he's just like from Facebook, but I get a lot of the, but the flowers were a little weird. I was like, wow, he really <laughs> like sent flowers, but yeah. Wow, people must really love you. <laughs> I guess so, I guess so, yeah. Well, I heard about a recent trip. Tell us about your global stage and where have you been? 
Um, I've been to Berlin and I've been to London, but most recently I was in Reykjavik in Iceland, mm -hmm. which was amazing. I'm a huge fan of Bjork, so Bjork's from Iceland, and it was, when I learned that I was going, I was very excited because I've always been a fan of hers, and just to see, like, you know, where is she from? Because Iceland is really just like an island, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it was amazing. Yeah, I performed over there, and it was my first time there, and for anybody who hasn't been there, I think they should put it on their bucket list. Mm -hmm. It's very spiritual and uh it's just a beautiful place, very serene, you know, very peaceful. The people, um, very pure, real. Mm. Food was great, and the water, like I said earlier, is amazing. <laughs> so um, it was great. Was it your favorite place, though? <laughs> um, for different reasons. I would say that if, if I could afford to go to Iceland once a month for a nice weekend away, I would. Because the Blue Lagoon, I mean, when you, after this interview, like, look up Iceland and research Blue Lagoon, you would want to go. You will want to visit it. It's it's. It's very, um, I don't know, I feel enriched after I came back, like, just spiritually. Well, I'm so glad that you came back. I am, too. <laughs> we don't want to lose you to Iceland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, build a little house on stage over there. <laughs> so where are you going next? What's what's next for you? Um, well, I have uh, several things coming up. My next performance is going to be in Harlem um, at Billy Black's. I'm doing a... Uh, cute little performance and appreciation for Jazz Month, mm -hmm. which April is the Jazz Month, and I'm going to be singing some of my songs and some jazz covers, so um, that'll be next month, and then a lot of events and stuff. If you follow me on uh, Instagram, you'll see some of the cool stuff that I'll be doing. So, Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for watching Coffee Time. Join us again as we continue to share the experiences of our guests over a cup of coffee.